for alternatives to radioactive dumping, or CARD. Uh, CARD is a mostly volunteer organization. Uh, it's a statewide organization. It was founded in 1978. Uh, one of CARD's missions is education in the school, and we do have presenters that go into grade schools, mid schools, and high schools. Uh, they uh, present um, kind of the whole picture of the nuclear industry in New Mexico, and then they dwell on the health issues. Many <coughs> high school students in New Mexico are targeted to be nuclear workers, so we're trying to give them both sides of the story. Um, another uh, card mission is to support communities or groups and communities who are trying to deal with contamination on uh, nuclear contamination or sometimes chemical contamination. Um, we try to give them organizational support and if we have funding, <laughs> funding support. So um, that kind of comes and goes as most of you know who deal with the nonprofit world. So uh, two groups in Albuquerque that I facilitate are our Endangered Aquifer Working Group and um, Aguas Vida Action Team. So um, our Endangered Aquifer Working Group deals with contamination from Sandia National Labs and Kirtland Air Force Base. And there's quite a bit of it. Um, as many of you know, uh, we have um, 24 million gallons um, contaminant plume from Kirtland. Air Force Base now in our drinking water aquifer, and from Sandia National Labs we have a plume of over a billion gallons of contaminants in our aquifer, and these contaminants include um, known carcinogens, uh, they include uh, suspected carcinogens and um, chemicals that cause birth defects. So. Um, None of these uh, plumes have reached our drinking water supply wells yet, but they're getting closer. So uh, our endangered aquifer working group has been working with the Water Utility Authority who manages the water in this area, and uh, they have made some strides in that uh, the Water Utility Authority is uh, now making cleanup uh, money for Sandia National Labs, uh, one of its legislative uh, priorities. They have also been educating uh, state legislators in uh, preparation to do some legislation concerning our water. Um, the Water Utility Authority has been more proactive in, than the Environment Department. Uh, the Environment Department during uh, Susanna Martinez's uh, reign has uh, been cut back uh, greatly and uh, their regulatory ability has been restricted. Aguas Vida Action Team is very concerned about um, the fact that Albuquerque is drinking out of the Rio Grande as it has for the last uh, number of years and the Rio Grande is quite polluted including runoff from Los Alamos National Labs uh, which is upstream from us. So, um, along with Amigos Bravos and other groups, um, they advocated and uh, won um, better, uh, more protective uh, testing of long-lived alpha-emitting radiation in the Upper Rio Grande, close to Los Alamos. And uh, recently, they have been advocating for a micron filter and um, and the diversion plant that diverts uh, the Rio Grande water into drinking water. Um, Santa Fe has one, El Paso has one, all the surrounding cities have one and that would reduce the amount of plutonium that we are drinking. We are drinking plutonium right now uh, in our water. It's below regulatory concern but um, these regulations, EPA regulations, were promulgated in the 1970s, and they were based on uh, a young Caucasian male reference man. And uh, since then, we know that uh, women, children, and especially the fetus are much more susceptible to uh, radiation um, exposure than reference man. 
So there is a movement uh, nationwide to change EPA standards to reflect this newer science. And it's being headed up by the organization IEER, here's my cheat sheet, the Institute for Energy and Environmental Research. If you Google IEER, it's easy to get into their website. And then you need to go to the section that's healthy from the start to find out more about that. So, um, I'd just like to say um, something about our organizational uh, model, and that is when you work with affected communities, you do run into problems. Um, when you're uh, you know, depending on that leadership, oftentimes you're working with people who are sick or uh, youth who have lost um, most of their immediate family to issues of contamination of one sort or another. And uh, there are difficulties involved. But um, it's, it's a wonderful experience to watch, um, you know, um, the average citizen fire up and start coming up with strategies to protect their family yes. and communities. Yes. And to watch youth empowering itself and to, um, to again protect their community and their families and I just recommend that as a model and I want to thank you very much for your attention.